Hey, how you doing? I'm Steve. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to go through my list of the top 10 best hard rock singers of the 70s. So I'm starting with the decade where I first discovered rock and roll. I was in the music at a very early age and had my favorite song on a 45, a portable record player, and I took it everywhere at the tender age of four. Favorite song was Jam Up and Jelly Tight by uh, Tommy Rowe, if you know who that is. Jam up and jelly tight. You look a little naughty, but you're so polite. Anyway. You're really old. So... I wasn't really introduced to rock music until the 70s, and the first band I heard was Steppenwolf. Now, what I actually was introduced to was their gold greatest hits album. Now, it's got this, it's got this woman uh, with all this makeup on, and to be honest with you, I was five years old and scared the crap out of me. So anyway... Around 1975, this was the height of the disco era, I was given an album. Uh, it was called Disco Mania. It was put out by KTEL. Now, if you don't know what KTEL was in the 70s and I think into the 80s some, somewhat, KTEL would do these TV ads. KTEL presents Blockbuster, a great new LP, 20 original hits, original stars. And they'd be selling these compilation albums and stuff like that. You know, the best of Barry Manilow or, you know, Neil Sedaka or something like that. Well, Discomania is what I was given. I didn't know any better. You know, it was disco music that was, was on the radio. And this particular album did have a couple rock bands on it. There were Styx and their song Lady, which, I mean, they're a rock band, but it wasn't. Well, you know, it was pretty soft rock and roll until it got to the end of the song. But the one that started me on my rock and roll path was Kiss and Rock and Roll All Night. When I heard that, that was exactly what I was looking for and I couldn't get enough of it. That's why I'm starting with the 70s. There was no auto-tune, no fixing in the master. I mean... They couldn't edit and splice as easy as it is today. They, they actually had physical tape. For them to splice something was, was not an easy task. And, well, it was expensive. So they really had to be at the top of their game. Now, I picked my top 10 based on their stage presence, their vocal ability in the studio, as well as live. So I have links to the best albums for these bands at Amazon and all the gear I use. Um, it's all in the description. If you happen to follow one of those links, anything you buy after you click on the link, I may earn a commission from it. It goes a long way to helping the channel and I really appreciate it. So let's get started. 10. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly when you're alone. Jim Morrison of The Doors. He unfortunately died in the early 70s, but their album, L.A. Woman, that was from 71, and it was the first album of theirs that I had heard, and I really dug it. They still had that 60s sound, but he was really quite the poet and lyricist, and he had that low, growly voice. It was cool, and well, he was a rock star. I'd have to say that the album I think was his best was his last, L.A. Woman. Nine. Meatloaf. Now, when I first heard his album, Bad Out of Hell, I was blown away. Here's this big, sweaty guy who's got this fantastic voice. He's running all over the, the stage with more energy than I have. And I was a teenager. Um, I don't know. He was probably on the Coca-Cola train, but I was sheltered, didn't know much about that stuff. No dive. Anyway. Paradise by the Dashboard Lights, Bad Out of Hell, and Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. I just loved them. Then I got to see him in a Rocky Horror Picture Show. That just sealed the deal. <laughs> Bad Out of Hell is still my favorite album by Milo. Eight. <laughs> Brad Delp of Boston. Now, I bought this album right after the release in 1979. And 
I didn't know anything about them. I just thought the album looked really cool. And it did. I mean, check this out. Uh, <laughs> I know most people don't play picture discs, um, but I did. I played this thing all the freaking time. Anyway, when I started it, I heard more than a feeling and I was just digging it. And then I heard Brad's voice. He just blew me away. What a great voice. I love the entire album and the next Don't Look Back, playing them front to back over and over and over. I never got to see him live and I, I wish I had. The world lost an amazing voice in 2007 when he chose to leave this world. I still think the first album was his best. Seven. Ann Wilson of Heart, the hail from Seattle, Washington, which wasn't far from my old stomping grounds when I was a kid. And they hit the scenes in 1975 with her album, Dreamboat Annie. Now, Ann's strong, sultry vocals shine on songs like Magic Man, Crazy on You, and Barracuda. They had a bunch of great albums in the 70s, lots of great songs. Her, her voice just shines in everything. Uh, that band would not be the band without her vocals. Now, I would have to say my favorite album by them in the 70s, their first, Dreamboat Annie. Six. Dave Lee Roth of Van Halen. Okay, you can argue there are better singers. You can argue there are better lyricists, but you cannot deny that Dave was the pinnacle of showmanship. His signature screams and vocals were perfect for the Van Halen sound, and I don't think they would have hit as hard without him, even with the maestro who was Eddie. I say the very first Van Halen album is the one to get from the 70s. Five. Bon Scott, ACDC. Now, I was a late bloomer to ACDC. I didn't discover them until they released Highway to Hell in 1979, but Bon quickly became one of my favorites. His gritty voice just fits their music so well, and he had like a seriousness but a devil-may-care attitude. And it wasn't long after I heard that album, I went out and bought every album they had done previously. Incidentally, the first songs I ever learned on the guitar were Side One of Highway to Hell. Now, I dig all of these. But if I had to pick one, it would have to be Highway to Hell. Four. Robert Plant, Led Zeppelin. All right, so I might be bending the rules a little bit since Zepp's first albums were um, in 69, but they're my rules. So back off! Sorry. Sorry about that. In reality, I didn't discover Robert until 75, 76 when I first heard Black Dog on a compilation album. And I had to check these guys out. No stairway. Denied. Yeah, the iconic Stairway to Heaven was the first song of theirs that I had heard on the radio. But at the time, we really only listened to AM radio in the town I lived. There was no rock stations until 1974. And well... School buses only had AM radios. Yeah, maybe we were lucky because they did play the radio on the way to school, but, you know, it limited us to what we could hear. I mean, Muskrat Love was what we got to hear most of the time. Muskrat Susie, Muskrat Sam. Robert's vocals were amazing and fit the band's songs so well. He's a great singer. The album I would recommend, it's pretty hard to pick, but I would say Led Zeppelin IV is the one to go with. Three... Freddie Mercury of Queen. Now, I first discovered Queen with their album, A Night at the Opera. Um, there's a song on there called Best Friend. That's the first song I ever heard by him. And then the incomparable Bohemian Rhapsody. Now, I instantly loved his voice. While I have to admit I didn't love everything they did, I did love a lot of it. At that time, I was really digging on the harder stuff, so they weren't my first choice. However, they were the first band I ever saw front row center and I still don't know how we pulled that off, but it was killer. I did think Freddie from the concert, he was kind of arrogant because I actually thought that for a long time because when we were standing there, you know, front row center, here's Brian May and, and the rest of the guys are getting down in our face. 
he doesn't have anything to do with us. He won't even look at us. And I just thought he was just an arrogant jerk. It wasn't until I watched the biopic Bohemian Rhapsody that I found out that he was actually kind of a, a pretty shy guy. Still, he was a fantastic performer and a great, great vocalist. Rest in peace, Freddie. Do. So here I am bending the rules a bit because I didn't discover Priest until 1980 with the release of British Steel. And that was, by the way, the other album I learned all of Side One on when I picked up the guitar. Just because I didn't know him does not mean he wasn't a powerhouse in the 70s. Stained class, sin after sin, Rob just has this tremendous voice and I was blown away. I wanted to sing just like him, but here's a little secret. I can't. Well, duh. The second album I got of theirs is what I'm going to recommend. It was Judas Priest Unleashed in the East. This is a live album. It has all the great songs of the 70s. And if you have not heard it, you will be totally blown away. It's awesome. One. Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. Back in 1970, Steven's band Chain Reaction did a gig with Joe Perry's band, Jam Band, and they decided to come find bands and join forces. They released their debut album in 1973. Now, Steven's vocals and stage presence were just totally awesome. Songs like Dream On, Back in the Saddle Again, and Walk This Way, I don't think there was much better than that. It was just, his vocals were so strong, and it just fit everything, and he had such a range and such an attitude. It was Freaking awesome. All this and his lively performances show why he's number one in my book. It seems, and I agree, that their best album in the 70s was Toys in the Attic. Sadly, Aerosmith just announced on August 2nd, 2024, that they were retiring from touring, canceling all remaining shows because Steven hasn't been able to recover his voice from a fractured larynx. That's a complete bummer because I was really hoping to see them again because their shows are so awesome. But I'm glad I got to see them a few times I did over the years. So there you have it, my top 10 list of the greatest hard rock singers of the 70s. What do you think? Do you agree? Did I miss someone? Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. And if you like content like this, consider subscribing. So until next time, remember, our favorite artists may fade away. Their music lives on, so rock's not dead. Take care. Take care.